Hello there, this is Bushman Ron and today um, I've had a blast from the past and I thought it would be a bit self-indulgent and go back to my childhood and games we used to play with what I term as the slingshot arrow. Now this is a very simple but effective um, we used to term them as toys when we were kids and used to use them as such and um, today if you throw one in the in public you would probably get arrested and um, for having a lethal weapon and um, right so let's get started the arrow itself is made from 60 centimeter tomato canes you get from most garden stores cost you between one and two pound for 25 um, so you can see they're pretty cheap. <coughs> the method I would show to put the arrows in, if you can see the end here, you can see that it's split. I know you can see the end here because I'm looking at the screen. So um, it's upside down. So it just makes it a little bit harder for me to understand which way is going on. Okay, so now what we've done is we've split this cane down. And this cat, this split is to put the flights in. <clears throat> now the danger with splitting this is what I or how I do it is I put my knife on the edge, clamp the cane, and then batten down the crack until it splits far enough to put a flight in. Okay. The problem with that is the grain of wood likes to follow the grain of the wood the split likes to follow the grain and you can end up with splits like that and then something the flight isn't going to go into so in that case all you can do there is snap that piece off I won't do it no point and start again I would start on the opposite end like I have here split it in half and then put the knife across the would then put the knife across the other cut and split that in half again now this one here has been done in true video fashion here's one I did earlier and you can see how it's split all round that's split in four so you can get the two flights in right, the flights themselves here simple as simple can be all I've done is cut a piece of card um, <coughs> into squares. We used to use playing cards when we were kids just to make them look a bit more interesting and flash. Any sort of pitch cards. Um, and cut them into squares, fold them directly into triangles straight down the middle and touch the tips together. I can do that so it's nice and even. Um, and then you just do the same with the other one. You slide it down the the groove, and then you slide one facing it down the groove on the other side. So now you've got a little piece of wood either side of the joint. To stop the joint splitting, if you can see that very carefully, I've tied a little bit of cotton. Now, when we were kids, we used to do for quickness we used to chuck a bit of tape on there sellotape um, and as you just throwing them down a the field you don't really need to do them neat or tidy just as long as it's sufficient to hold them nice and tight tie a couple of knots around them again knots you can find ten to a dozen I just used two knots granny knot if you like to call it on the ends and that was it end of story done um, the next stage to this would be to sharpen the tip. Now every schoolboy, every scout, everybody who's ever had a knife worth anything has sharpened a piece of wood and that's all you would do is sharpen the end of the wood. Um, if I was just using the wood itself I would sharpen it, burn it and then scrape the charcoal off and make sure it's still sharp 
just because this makes it that little bit harder um, and more penetrative to get into whatever it's stabbing into. Um, in this case, I won't be doing that because um, I'm not going to be aiming at stabbing things, I'm just going to be uh, showing you how to throw them down a field. Uh, this is one of two videos, which this one is the assembling of the arrow. The next one will be showing you how far um, and possibly how accurate it can be. So that's it. You've got how to split the stick, how to make it even, and how to put the flights on and keep them on. The next stage is um, the string of the firing mechanism. Can I just say about a safety point on here is that when you're splitting he can't get his knife in there when you're splitting these sticks hold it with a foot let's try this one I'll go in here hold it with your foot or put it in a vise or whatever but whatever you do don't be tempted to hold on to that and split it because if it goes too far as you can see there how dangerous that looks you could seriously injure your hand and the last thing you want is a knife sharp enough to split the stick going straight into your finger okay so that's it the health and safety part gone over with now as I was saying the firing mechanism is plainly and simply a piece of string or in this case paracord with a knot in it now how you attach the paracord is simple again you have a little I don't know if you can see this there's a little gouge out of here that's a natural gouge so I'm going to use that normally we'd put a little V in the um, wood there just to give it a bit of purchase but it seems this is here I'm going to use this all I'm going to do is put the knot on there wrap the string around get a bit of tension there hold that holds on to the knot nice and tight as you can see I'm pulling there really hard and that's not coming off now my firing mechanism as you can see has uh, my first attempt of a monkey's fist on it which is quite good for holding on to but I'll also wrap my fingers around it like this if I'm in vision like this and then hold on to the stick like that now that is your throwing mechanism and all you do is throw it as if you would throw a stone obviously keep hold of the cord and once the arrow is released if I can do this correctly the arrow goes by the tension comes off the string it lets go let's go and the arrow is released now this method is or reminds me of the aboriginal throwing stick which means that you could throw this stick but it would go about 10 feet yeah but because you have the 18 inches or so of stick that you're throwing that makes that almost like 10 times as strong so you're talking 100 feet at least yeah and then you you can throw as a boy you of 13 I was throwing these 100 meters um, the next <coughs> thing is the tip after you you could sharpen them but we as kids we were being adventurous playing whatever you term it but we used to get old darts and you can imagine a, the brass or steel part of a dart has the um, thread where the um, shaft would go into 
these can be trimmed down a little bit and then they will be forced into those tying or threading into those grooves and that makes that uh, depending on what weight of dart you put on that makes that go further and further each time uh, obviously the further the distance the less accuracy you got and um, but they are one really good for and um, playing with in la large fields uh, as long as you're playing with, with sensibly and there's no one um, possibly in the direction of where you're throwing them and two they're very effective killing tool if practiced with and the accuracy is um, improved and trained you could kill rabbits pheasants and um, depending on how good you are pigeons and um, but the net as I said before this is a two-part video and with this is the first part and I'm now going to go off and throw them and see just how accurate they are and what sort of distances you can get out of them so for now this is Bushman Ron signing off see you soon bye bye